It's Sunday night. We're live, and it is not the Day of Atonement. How are you doing, brother? I'm great. I'm great. I'm excited for tonight, and uh, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Please, uh, if you could, hit like and share the content with anybody that may be looking for the truth. Yeah, absolutely. So most of the world is is thinking that at sundown they've begun the Day of Atonement, but we're part of a small group, uh, an elect few, that know that it's not and uh, we're going to talk about tonight how how the rest of the world may be planning on using this false day of atonement and uh, we're also going to be taking a look at the book of enoch because who is that book written for brother uh, the elect in the end times in the end times yeah so <laughs> we want to see what it has to say right yeah we're going to be checking to see if there's a rapture in it <laughs> that's, that's the main reason we're going to be looking at it it's because we want to make sure that we're standing in the correct doctrine and we're following the path of truth because that's what christ told us to do well it seems like a good good plan to me um what else what else are you seeing brother we we went live friday night i thought that was a great uh great podcast that we had and you know it was nine two two nine two three and no no new world order fulfillments uh, to speak of that i saw you got guys like yako from god's roadmap to to the end that uh, he came out with a video talking about um what is it no no backbiting no 
Scoffers. Scoffers. No scoffers. Yeah. Apparently, that when people make false predictions and you know uh, create their own doctrine, you're not allowed to call them out for it. And uh, you know that's the other thing that I see. You know, people don't like it when uh, we ramp things up, and unfortunately, that's what we're going to keep doing. That's that's the way that this goes. Um, and you know, if you if you're under the pretense that you think that uh, you somehow imagined because of a movie in the 1980s called Left Behind that you're going to be somehow raptured off the earth with an unsound, unbiblical doctrine, and we're not going to come out and, and stand against you with the truth, then you're you're deluded. You're delusional. And anyone that doesn't expose darkness and evil, you are going to be the blood of that will be on your hands, as Ezekiel 33 outlines. And, and that's what we do here. And we actually do it out of love, right? I mean. If, if we didn't care, we, we would be, you know, mixing DJ songs and Jason would be, you know, creating music and, and art or whatever it is that your passion was. Um, but no, we actually want to fight and search and, and look for the truth as much as possible. That's what we're here to do. Yeah. Who are the ones that get chastised? The ones the that ones are... The ones that you ha how loves, right? Right. Yeah. So if you're not getting chastised, maybe, maybe you're not cared about. So... Yeah. Uh, especially if you're wrong, if you're in error. Um, that's right, that's right. <laughs> another uh, thing that I noticed today was NASA with their whole Osiris Rex thing. And um, so there's a seven-year narrative going on with that that it turns out that it was just eight days before you and I met that they supposedly launched this Osiris Rex thing. And so here we are just over seven years later and they supposedly landed it. Now we watched that, that footage and there's so many insane flaws in it and there's hidden hidden narratives that was in the footage as well or the coverage of it that I have a feeling that we're going to be hearing about leaked leaked biohazards from space and um, you know, aliens and all this kind of nonsense as a result of this Osiris-Rex thing that you know that's that comes from Egyptian Egyptian pagan folklore, and yeah. So, what did you think about that that whole narrative? That's retarded. I mean, for you to believe that NASA was able to take off, uh, le was able to launch a rocket, detach from the rocket, and then fly an unmanned drone spacecraft over a billion miles away from earth well they're saying they're saying the round trip was three three point eight billion miles yeah well i guess due to the parabolic curve in the arc and everything i'm talking in a straight line there and a straight line back i don't have the exact as, as the crow flies right yeah as the the triple seven crow flies yeah <laughs> watch out he'll sue you if you publish this if you put up his content so if you believe that they were then able to somehow remote control a drone when i don't even get service in the backyard here my cell phone they landed on the asteroid or somehow got close enough to it where they could scrape it, obtain a sample, and then they flew back another, again, unmanned, over a billion miles, and somehow it parachuted into the Earth's atmosphere and landed. And then, you know, the whole entire thing, the fact that they had a helicopter, there was two people there to receive the package. All they had to do was, you know, pick it up and then load it into a vehicle and drive it to whatever facility no they got to bring a helicopter in lower a cable down and hook it on to something and then fly all the way from where was it new mexico uh utah utah and they're taking it to houston and uh if you think that that's real you know please uh jason and i we're, we're selling these really nice bridges if you need a good bridge let us know email us if you believe that that stuff came from binu two million miles or 1.56 miles away uh, you're crazy. You're out to lunch. And, you know, it absolutely dumbfounds me how stupid, how stupid this reality is actually getting, how fake, how ridiculous for anybody to believe. Listen, if you think you can fly a drone, even go 500 miles away from you with a remote controller and fly that drone back and land it, I would love to see it. I would love to see it. Yeah, well, NASA was complaining uh, about their glitchy footage of the coverage because they said there's there's barely any coverage out there but yet this is supposedly nasa that can be having phone calls with people on the moon back in the yeah right 
Yeah, but they said that they flew a drone to the outer reaches of the solar system. We're going way beyond the moon landing here. There's, they said they went to the edge of the solar system, then flew it back, and then, you know, dropped it, parachuted it. And not only that, the parachute deployed a whole minute early, right? And the whole thing wasn't... Uh, it wasn't done correctly, in my opinion. What they did was they flew a plane up into the air, dropped something, filmed it falling down to the earth, and then flew a helicopter over and picked up that same payload. It's it's something they've been constantly doing and caught doing. NASA has been caught doing this before, so it's hilarious, really. And it just so happens that their little three-foot package disc thing landed really close to a road where there was already tire tracks coming off of the road. Um, what are the quinky things of something like that happening, right? Yeah, so, not, yeah, just ridiculous. I mean, <laughs> it's not even like they airlifted it in and set it down carefully. No, they put it out there. You can see the tire tracks. It's NASA. The things that they do, they leave behind clues so that you really have to be dumb to miss that they're just running a psyop. So. Yeah, and then, I mean, the people covering it, you showed me the guy had an all-seeing eye patch with an upside-down cross in it, and he was sitting beside a woman who had, like, a three- or four-inch prosthetic chin that may, came out like a witch <laughs> chin, and, and I think she had a giant prosthetic on her nose, too. Uh, you know, I, I mean, she just needed a hat and a broom, and she was your perfect, like, right off of Hollywood witch, <laughs> and I, I can't be the only one who sees these things. No, no, but... Or you, or, or Gloria, or YD, or Solid Tank, or Brother B. You know, how many people are, are, are witnessing this? Now, the, the lengths that they're going to perpetuate the fact that we live in a heliocentric, infinite, Big Bang model reality, is, it's getting to the point where it's, it's retarded. You, you have to be brain dead to think that they flew a drone to the outer reaches of the solar system and were somehow able to scrape a sample off of an asteroid. You're crazy, especially if you're a Christian and you're tuning in here and you think the earth is a sphere. Well, where does the four corners of the sphere point them out to me? Show me how the earth being fixed and immovable. Show me how that's okay to spin a thousand miles an hour at the equator and 66.6 thousand miles an hour around the sun and 666,000 miles around the galactic Milky Way center. I'd love to see how that lines up with any biblical doctrine. And, and that's uh, going for... Who are these rapture doctor? Patrick, um, Hourly Watch Channel, God a Minute, um, Bob Barber from Feed His Sheep. You know, I would like you guys to explain to me how you're reading the Bible and the scriptures and how it says the earth is fixed and immovable, but then you think we are on a spinning, flying, wet, gyrating rock in outer space. I, I really, I would love to know where you're getting your doctrine from. Yeah, so all the Rapture Watch channels that are out there, are vatican heliocentric shills they all push the globe earth and none of them stick with the bible so there that's a huge issue but that's not what tonight is about we um we will be covering what we were talking about with that osiris rex if if the narrative goes into space virus and uh, all that kind of garbage we'll we'll be covering that in depth more but Tonight we are going to be going through the scriptures in Enoch. This was a book written for our time. We're going to be reading what Enoch had to say about our time. And, um, and then also we'll do some coverage regarding this totally incorrect day of atonement that we're in. As, as long as the sun is set for you, supposedly we're in that incorrect day of atonement. So... Right. There is a, a war associated with that, and, and we'll get into that as soon as we take a song break. How does that sound, brother? It's great. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in again. Please hit like and share. That's the only way you're able to find our content. We've been sandboxed for years, and, and you know I'm actually hoping that the people that are tuning in will help us fight back. We really rely on you. If you, if you feel moved, please just make sure that you share this and share this with anyone that may be a Christian what we really uh, that's what we're caring about right now let's go
We are back, and we are going to start off with a clip from Brenda Weltner, everybody's favorite rapture shill. Right? She's going to talk about the Feast of Atonement. Yeah. So she has a video that she put out on the 23rd, fine-tuning the timeline, good stuff. Everything that she's got in this video is wrong. But um, we're going to start by talking about she she doesn't say the feast of atonement but oh, the she way right in this video but the no but the way she says it she lumps it in with all the feasts like it is a feast and um and then she also makes a connection to the yom kippur war so the yom kippur war huh mm -hmm. Look at the six day war 50 years ago happy anniversary to the hoax faked yom kippur war exactly so we have the transcript up here. You can follow along here. This is a clip that starts at 729. Let's check this out right here. And a rapture is in 2023. That means that next week there has to be a war. <laughs> there has to be a war in Israel, but we don't know what day. If there is no war in Israel next week, then we go another year. Right. So that's how this goes. It's a template and it's associated with these days. It, it has to be associated with these days because we know Jesus is going to return on the Day of Atonement in some year. That's that's a known thing. Okay, so we know. All right, did we you get catch that? We, uh, I think we might be having a doubling somewhere. Uh, I don't see it on your end, but we're getting from the chat there's a really bad echo hmm Let's see here oh yeah i see where it is thank you very much for everybody in the chat we'll be looking after these situations we uh 
we're always improving and looking for new ways to share sound and we're always having to learn new new uh, hurdles so let us know if the echo has stopped and we will be able to proceed all right so let me go back and play that clip again so everybody got it And our rapture is in 2023. That means that next week there has to be a war. <laughs> there has to be so a nice. war in Israel, but we don't know what day. If there is no war in Israel next week, then we go another year. Okay, so that's how this goes. It's a template and it's associated with feast days. It, it has to be associated with feast days because we know Jesus is going to return on the Day of Atonement in some year. That's... That's a known yeah, I mean, thing. Hold on. Okay, so we know the feast. <laughs> she said that's a known feast day. <laughs> Atonement is not a feast day, right? It's a fast. Oh. It's a fast day, not a feast. A fast. You're 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 one hundred percent not supposed to feast <laughs> on anything, right? So, and and she's also cut out the ministry of the two witnesses. She believes that the two witnesses was. John the Baptist and Yahweh Shai, and that they did the three and a half years, 2,000 years ago. That's how she shoehorned the prophecy from Daniel. Right? Yeah, so she makes the mention of, we know that it's going to be the Day of Atonement. And so if we don't have a war this week, then we're going off to next year. So she's... She's making the connection to atonement. She's calling it a feast day. No, it's a, a Moedin, right? This is an appointed time. It's absolutely not a feast. It's the opposite. It's the reciprocal of a feast. And um, so if we take a look at, just go to, go to Google, everybody, and type in Yom Kippur 2023. That's what most of the world knows this as. Um... It tells you that September 24th at sundown to Monday 25th sundown is the Day of Atonement. Now there are guys like uh, Adam Finkelstein of Parable of the Vineyard that he's he's saying he's going to do the the Day of Atonement from the 25th to the 26th. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and he says it's okay if you guys want to do it your way. Everything he's okay with everybody doing everything however they want. Yeah, just do it any which way. It doesn't matter to him. <laughs> no, there are, um, if you listen to, to the guys that wear the little hats, they will say that there are five rules for this. Mm -hmm. The five rules that they have are one, no eating or drinking. So here is the fast, right? That's, that's great. Two, they say you can't bathe. Three, no anointing the body with oil. Four, you can't wear leather shoes. And five, no sex. So, number one is biblical, right? And it's also, you're not supposed to work. No working, no eating, no drinking. So, for those, we're not at the Day of Atonement right now. We're, we're a month away from that. And we'll be talking about that where if, if this is a typical work day for you, try to get it off in vacation beforehand but it is a day to call in sick if you don't have the vacation days so hang on let us be one thing clear right now let no man judge you on sabbaths and new moons never okay let no man judge you if your schedule is and you know the majority of the realm aren't even correctly keeping the fast the way that moses was instructed to or the the sabbaths as they go with the new moon and they go on the 8th the 15th and the 29th day of each month not on a Saturday, not on a Sunday. There was no such thing as a Saturday or a Sunday in the in the times of Moses. So what Jason is talking about here is the holiest day of the year, which is the Day of Atonement. And, and on this day, we're saying that it is a good idea that we actually try to get the sick day. If you are a working person and you have to work that day, this is one that we suggest that you actually try as hard as you can not to go into work, right? Mm -hmm. This is the only day of the year that Jason and I would say this because trust us, let no one judge you upon your Sabbaths or festivals. If you want to celebrate Passover, 
celebrate it. If you don't, don't. You, you're not going to be judged on that. But when it comes to the Day of Atonement, we are absolutely told to keep this. And everybody that lives with us, everybody that is around us, everybody that we know, we're supposed to also have them do this with us. It's for all of the nations, not just for the so-called people that say they are Hebrew. It's for everyone. Yeah, so no working, no eating and drinking. That's that's what the Bible has to say. All these other things are, are Talmudic things. The no bathing, the no putting oil on your body, not wearing shoes, and the sexual relations. That's not said in the Bible. Well, yeah, well, I mean, so the Day of Atonement is where we're to humble ourselves and we're to, you know... Think about the Father and His will and His purpose and what He did for us and why we're here. Now, I can give the quick synopsis really quick. So, no bathing is because we're supposed to lament and we're supposed to actually just... I can understand that they don't want us to be thinking about personally cleaning and, and this. They want us to humble ourselves. Now, um, not wearing the leather shoes, they take it to the fact that, um, I guess, if you put leather shoes on your feet, you have some sort of a haughty or a, a egotistical outlook because you are more important than the animal that died for your feet to be walking on, right? Even though, uh, what was it, Crocs are more comfortable than leather, leather shoes anyways. So it's, it's just a weird Talmudic thing. Like they tell the people in the, in the Noahide laws, you're not allowed to eat the arm of an alive animal, right? <laughs> Things are just ri ridiculous. We don't, we don't want anything to do with the Talmud or the Zohar or any of the Kabbalism. That's, yeah. All that stuff is going to burn. Crocs are pretty comfortable. No wearing Crocs either, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, so yeah, this this is what the rest of the world is doing right now. The the Day of Atonement, which is a fast, not a feast. And, and the way um, Brenda tied it together with the feast days just is so cringe. Absolutely cringe. But she mentioned that there's got to be a war. And so will we hear a report of a war tomorrow? I don't know. In my opinion, there's actually a really good chance. So here's an article that came out today from, from this Israeli thing. It says Israel. Uh, hey, um. Yeah, I don't know what that is. I think it's part of Goyim mixed with Ha. <laughs> hey, um. Right? That's what I see. Yeah, so Israel more vulnerable now than 50 years ago, Yom Kippur War experts say reflecting on the fateful war's 50th anniversary. So you've got um, guys like Bob Barber that are saying that we're this is a jubilee year because, because the Yom Kippur War was 50 years ago, and he's saying the Yom Kippur War was on a jubilee. Well, none of that's true. And this entire war was, was made up. It's another Freemasonic lie totally the whole thing it was faked uh the war is theater free masonic hoax. theater hoax hoax and the missile on the truck there huh <laughs> yeah <clears throat> did that thing launch the missile it just it takes off from there there's no uh rod that it has to you know rise on this is just a prop i mean look at look at this like that thing could actually fly and be you know go towards something is is a joke so it says here israel was unprepared for the yom kippur war and blinded by hubris after emerging victorious in 67. so they're saying that because it was yom kippur that you know they they were caught off guard they were in the fast they weren't prepared and if you look at if you look at what they got here Everybody was just listening on the radio. This is really well edited back with color and everything. Wow, they, the IDF did a great job on this. <laughs> Everybody just listened to this on the radio, just like War of the Worlds. Yeah, everybody heard it on the radio. So they've supposedly got these jets loaded up with missiles and bombs and... Those were pretty modern looking planes back then. Yeah, they're still using those same planes. <laughs> Even maybe less less attractive ones. So they got the footage of the kids filling sandbags. Right? And and the kids carrying the sandbags. <laughs> there. There they Yeah, they're protected. They're safe now. 
בעוד כוחות הקרקע נקלעים בדחיפות עליונה לחוש של... Put your sandbags out, dig some trenches, and there you go. You got a Yom Kippur war there. Yeah, they're, you're born in the population then, just as they do it now. So they're talking about how Israel paid a heavy price then. Its casualties and losses will pale in comparison to Israel's next major confrontation. So they got the, the books and all these things talking about... You know, well, and, and Brenda talked about it, how we're looking for... We're looking for the Gog Magog War. And you know, there's all the New World Order propaganda about a third world war. And so, yeah, they are going to fake at some point Israel being attacked. And what better to, a, to do that on than Yom Kippur, right? So we could wake up tomorrow to, to headlines or sometime tomorrow we could get headlines regarding this. I just wanted to make everybody aware of that. Mm -hmm. And that it's not Yom Kippur, right? <laughs> So, so here is on the left-hand side, this is the left-hand path. This is what the Vatican and what the tiny hats and all these people are going by. They went uh, a month early this year by starting Nissan one on three, two, two this year. And so as we've seen from the scriptures, the day of atonement begins at sundown on the ninth day and ends at sundown on the 10th day. Now, Adam Finkelstein, Parable of the Vineyard, he showed the scriptures about this, but you know what he's going to do? He's, he's going to, he told his people to go from 925 sundown to 926 sundown, right? So he'll, t he'll show you the truth. He'll tell you about the truth and then they'll do something totally different. I mean, they're off by a day and a month. So it's like a, a double wrong. Now if we go back here. On the right-hand calendar, this is... Oh, I went too far. So that's 22, 23. Yeah, Brother B was quick to point out they started the year off on 322 when they were a month early. Here we go. So still hadn't crossed the dividing line, which is the second line of the two of Pisces. So right now we are in the month of Elul. And at the end of this month, on October 14th, even, even the rapture community that has been trying to hide that we have eclipses coming up, they are now finally talking about the ring of fire eclipse that happens the day before trumpet. So on October 15th at sundown, there will be a sighting of a, a sliver of the moon. And that will be trumpets, right? That will be trumpets. So then these are the 10 days of awe and the real day of atonement will be taking place at sundown on the 23rd, going to sundown on the 24th. Now I haven't, some, maybe somebody can tell me what day of the week that is in case people are interested in trying to get that day off of work, all right? But then Tabernacles will begin uh, sundown with a, a lunar eclipse at uh, October 29th. And then the eighth day, which, which Brenda Weltner says is such a mystery and nobody can figure out what day that is, that will be October 6th. Right? It's pretty simple. It's really simple. Well, the 24th is a Tuesday. Okay. All right. Yeah. So... Maybe, maybe just try to get the three day weekend, everybody, or four day weekend, whatever it takes in order to, um, yeah, just get that Tuesday off and, uh, hang out with us. I'm sure we're going to be doing a live stream. We're going to be here, you know, absolutely. All right. So that's the information regarding, uh, atonement coming up and and the Yom Kippur War that we're looking for a 50-year anniversary of. So what we're saying is that uh, we're now entering into the final Shemitah, or seven years of the last of the 119th Jubilee. 
So, or the 120th Jubilee. Well, that'll be that'll be the one coming up. So, yeah, you're right. The 119th last Shemitah would be the the year 5993. And what I want to point out again with your calendar, just one more time, just in case anybody hasn't heard us explain this. When the year started off, right, the correct year, when the sun was rising in the house of the Lamb, as Moses was instructed by Yahweh to keep the sun, the first year, the head of the year, shall be called Nisan. That's the sign in the sky that is the Lamb, right? That's the Lamb in the sky. And we were told to keep it there. Now, on the left-hand path, Jason's showing you is when they went with it on 322, and the sun was not in the house of the Lamb. It was in the house of Pisces, right? So due to procession, the way that we've been keeping time for the last 6,000 years, you have to do a little correction. Just as they did 2,000 years ago, they would have had to make sure that they didn't celebrate in the month of Taurus. Now we're correcting the other way because time has gone by. So what we ended up having is when we, we had the equal lux, equal day and night, 12 hours of day and 12 hours of night, then we counted to our first new moon. And what we ended up having was a super sa Sabbath hybrid eclipse that took place as the moon and sun so when the sun moon passes the sun, it creates an eclipse, or it did this month. And as that new moon came out, that was the beginning of our year, 5993. And so if we scroll down, Jason, we're going to take you to the beginning now of the fall festivals. That was the beginning of the year, the head of the year with the sun and the Nissan sign, the, the house of the lamb, the way that Moses was instructed. Mm -hmm. And now what we're showing you is if you correctly account for that, you're going to have a solar eclipse also kicking off the fall the festivals of the fall now and the first one starts off with the new moon that we see so as the moon crosses the path of the sun when she comes back out the first sliver we see is going to be on trumpets right the the corrected hebrew paleo hebrew mosaic calendar here not even the people who call themselves jews are explaining this to you because they've they've the, their wicked hearts have led them away just as it says in the book of enoch you're going to hear that those who are wicked are going to err when concerning these days so well, as we have the beginning of the year go ahead jason i was just going to get on to the whole second part of this well i i just want to point out that this ring of fire eclipse this takes place on the ring finger of virgo yeah also the fact that it's on the ring finger of virgo it's a you. ring of fire eclipse on the ring fire of virgo so the reason why that's happening is because it's the seventh month right because we kept passover in the correct month and and to top that off is that the the festival of of Tishri with trumpets and atonement, the day of atonement leading up to the Feast of Tabernacles, the eight day festival takes place in the sign of the Virgin in the sky. And if you followed the 322 satanic Jewish calendar on the left, you would have had the sun not even in, it was still in the lion sign. The sun hadn't even made it into the house of the Virgin yet. They, they celebrated it all incorrectly this year. And not only that, everybody that's tuning in right now in the in the northern half of the, the flat four-cornered realm that we live on that's fixed and immovable, you will notice that it's been quite hot still. We were above 100 degrees today. Does that sound to you like fall weather? No. If you follow Yahweh and his true calendar, you'll notice that the seasons follow you and what you're following. And that's all we've ever actually cared about and wanted to do. And it's sad that we are the only two witnesses unto this truth nobody else wants to share it nobody else wants to talk to us we have to go to the point now where we literally have to mock them to the point where we hope that it might wake them up but we don't know so again not only do we have the beginning of this year was marked with an absolute amazing hybrid eclipse now we have the beginning of the fall feasts and the day of atonement and then when we get to, to the tabernacles we also have a blood moon so we have the sun being darkened and then the moon being turned to blood for the left-hand path people over here that went with 322. Notice that uh, what they end up with is the last day of their seventh month, which it's not the seventh month, but the last day of the seventh month then has the ring of fire eclipse. And then the blood moon takes place on the 15th, 14th and 15th of the eighth month, which is, it's nothing. There's nothing special. Yeah. 
So that's that's our coverage for tonight regarding the Day of Atonement, the Yom Kippur War. So maybe we'll take a, a break here and then we'll come back and we'll start reading from uh, Enoch what he had to say about these days. Let's How's that sound? Like a stranger in a Book of Enoch. Yeah, and that was a brand new song. It's called Give Me a New Role, performed by Sir Was. Just for anybody that tunes in, we like to share brand new music as much as we possibly can. You know, I had never heard of the Book of Enoch. <laughs> and it was because of Flat Earth that I heard about it because, well, Enoch talks about the course of the luminaries. Yeah. And so when I first started digging into and learning about flat earth there was a number of channels that were talking about the book of enoch and you know i remember my original nerves about reading something other than the the 66 canon but boy once once you read the book of enoch and you see how this ties in and this is like the original book this is the book that made it on the ark and um well before before moses Right. Enoch was the scribe, 
He was the scribe. That's correct. So, absolutely amazing. The course of the luminaries is, is more accurate as to the actual course of the luminaries than anything NASA has ever done. True. And uh, it's amazing. So, this was written for this time. So, we should check it out. What do you think, brother? Yeah, why don't you start reading it? I'm excited. All right. It says... The words of this blessing of Enoch, whereas he blessed the elect and righteous who will be living in the day of tribulation, when all the wicked and godless are to be removed. And he took up his parable and said, Enoch, a righteous man whose eyes were opened by Yahweh, saw the vision of the Holy One in the heavens, which the angel showed me, and from them I heard everything, and from them I understood as I saw but not for this generation, but for a remote one which is for to come. Concerning the elect, I said, and took up my parable concerning them, the Holy Great One will come forth from his dwelling, and the eternal Elohim will tread upon the earth, even on Mount Sinai, and appear from his camp, and appear in the strength of his might from the heaven of heavens. And all shall be smitten with fear, and the watchers shall quake, and great fear and trembling shall seize them until the ends of the earth. And the high mountains shall be shaken, and the high hills shall be made low, and shall melt like wax before the flame. And the earth shall be wholly rent in sunder, and all that is upon the earth shall perish, and there shall be a judgment upon all men. But with the righteous he will make peace, and he will protect the elect, and mercy shall be upon them, and they shall all belong to Yahweh, and they shall be prospered, and they shall all be blessed, and he will help them all, and light shall appear unto them, and he will make peace with them. And behold, he cometh with ten thousands of his holy ones to execute judgment upon all, and to destroy all the ungodly, and to convict all flesh. All of the works of the ungodliness which they have ungodly committed and all the hard things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. So, I mean... So, right away, we, we get references straight out of the Valso and there's been, this has been used in the book of Revelation. Right? And behold, he cometh with ten thousands of his holy ones. Right? And we also have passages used in Enoch from the book of Jude and from the second book of Peter. Yeah, so just everybody notice that it's the wicked that are going to be destroyed here on earth, and it's the righteous that are going to be protected here on earth. There was not one thing about anybody going... No rapture yet. Hmm. Nope. So we're going to skip through this a little bit. Mm -hmm. And it says, And for all of you sinners there shall be no salvation but on you all shall abide a curse. But for the elect there shall be light and joy and peace, and they shall inherit the earth. Not heaven, huh? Not heaven. This is... And then there shall be bestowed upon the elect wisdom, and they shall all live and never again sin, either through ungodliness or through pride. But they who are wise shall be humble. And they shall not again transgress, nor shall they sin all the days of their life, nor shall they die of the divine anger or wrath, but they shall complete the number of the days of their life, and their lives shall be increased in peace, and the years of their joy shall be multiplied in eternal gladness and peace all the days of their life. Go down here. 17 and then they shall and then shall all the righteous escape and shall live till they beget thousands of children and all the days of their youth and their old age shall they complete in peace so let's just take a stop here yeah and the escape here isn't them being teleported into the sky it is escaping the destruction and those that are taken and bundled and burned they're not going to be bundled and burned. 
And then shall the whole earth be tilled in righteousness, and shall all be planted with trees and be full of blessings. Not, not heaven, everybody. We're talking about earth. Earth. And all desirable trees shall be planted on it, and they shall plant vines on it. And the vine which they plant thereon shall yield wine in abundance. And for all the seed which is show, sown thereon, each measure of it shall bear a thousand, and each measure of olives shall yield ten presses of oil. And cleanse thou the earth from all oppression, and from all unrighteousness, and from all sin, and from all godlessness, and all the uncleanness that is wrought upon the earth, destroy off the earth. And all the children of men shall become righteous, and all nations shall offer adoration, and shall praise me, and all shall worship me. And the earth shall be cleansed from all defilement, and from all sin, and from all punishment, and from all torment. I will never again send them upon it from generation to generation and forever. And in those days I will open the store chambers of blessings which are in the heavens so as to send them down upon the earth over the work and labor of the children of men. And truth and peace shall be associated together throughout all the days of the world and throughout all the generations of men. And so again, let's look up those who are taken before you scroll down. They are those who are raptured are taken to be destroyed, destroyed from off of the earth destroyed in verse 21 it says they are taken and destroyed from off of the earth anybody that's telling you that they're going to be caught up into the sky before the end of the tribulation this right here where this is a a kingdom this is the kingdom being preached almost five thousand years ago so the the main blight of earth are all the secret societies all right, you have yes, all the oppressors, all of those that are working uncleanness and, and defilement of man and those that that yoke up behind others backs and, um, you know, oppress the widows and the trodden down. And they take advantage of those that are less thought, less minded, like people that set up um, feed my sheep where Bob Barber lives in a big house with a 40 by 20 foot pool. But yet he wants you to give him money because he says he's feeding people in Kenya who they have iPhones in Africa now. Like he's grifting from 1980s grifts. These are the people who need to be destroyed, who are going to be destroyed off the face of the earth. And everyone else that takes money from anyone else over you, you, they made the, the house of Yahweh a den of vipers 2000 years ago. And they're doing it very the same way today. So the Vatican is mystery Babylon and the Vatican is responsible for all the secret societies. And all you have to do to make earth a, a decent place to live again is get rid of all the people that have taken oaths to all the secret societies, get rid of the Vatican. Right. And now all of a sudden you've done away with, with all the money changers. You've done away with all the oppressors. You've done away with all the people that, that make life unfair so that they can live rich while they oppress yeah. everybody else. Yeah. What does Bob Barber do for a living to pay for his concrete, poor driveway in his 40 by 20 pool while he's taking money feeding people in africa yeah you're going down to 25 well who are these people and he's just one there's so many people like that then shall they rejoice with joy and be glad and into the holy place shall they enter and its fragrance shall be in their bones and they shall live a long life on earth such as thy fathers lived and in their days shall no sorrow or plague or torment or calamity touch them. Then blessed I the Elohim of glory, the eternal King, who hath prepared such things for the righteous, and hath created them and promised to give them. So we understand that Methuselah lived, right? That was uh, Enoch's grandfather. He lived almost a thousand years, and the righteous, heavenly Yahweh kingdom Millennial reign means a thousand years. So Enoch was giving you that exact scripture 5,000 years ago. Should All right. Take over on the next one. Yeah, that sounds perfect. Okay. That's, uh, you want me to do a screen share? Absolutely. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Isn't it amazing that Enoch was able to get all this 5,000 years ago? He was able to have all this you know, figured out and everything. Let me just move that down there. Okay. We should be clear. So again, now we're going to get into the section two, the parables. 
in the book of Enoch, starting with chapter 38, which is the first parable. And it says, When the congregation of the righteous shall appear, and sinners shall be judged for their sins, and shall be driven from the face of the earth. What? Hang on, let's look at this a little slower again. When the congregation of the righteous shall appear, and sinners shall be judged for their sins, and shall be driven from the face of the earth. So again, who is being raptured here in this verse? The wicked. The wicked. Again, so every single person that's tuning in right now, if you know anybody that believes in the rapture, you need to tell them that it's the rapture of the wicked. We actually have it in the description box as a fundamental truth. We stand on these very, very, very narrow, very narrow fundamental gateway truths that we hold fast to. And we've, we've come to them through the deduction of false lies. And we we're left with what is the truth. I'll continue here. And in verse two, it says, and when the righteous one shall appear before the eyes of the righteous, whose works hang upon the Lord of spirits and light shall appear to the righteous and the elect who dwell on the earth. So let's just slow this down again. Who would be the Elohim or the creator of spirits? That is Yahweh. And who is the son of righteous? righteousness that's christ so i'll continue here in verse two where, where then will the be the dwelling of the sinners and where the resting place of those who have denied the lord of spirits it had been good for them if they had not been born when the secrets of the righteous shall be revealed and the sinners judged and the godless driven from the presence of the righteous and elect and from that time those that possess the earth shall no longer be powerful and exalted and they shall not be able to behold the face of the holy. For the Lord of spirits has caused his light to appear on the face of the holy, righteous, and elect. This is talking of the elect, the end times, everybody. Then shall the kings and the mighty perish and be given into the hands of the righteous and holy. Listen, we're getting um, Klaus Schwab, Bill Gates, all of these men, Tony Fauci's, all of these men who believe that they are kings, Justin Trudeau, uh, Macron, Bin BB Benjamin Netanyahu, Elon Musk, all of these mighty men who possess much money and land and possessions. That's what mighty men are. This is the you know, end, the end of all the secret society people, all the Freemasons, all the Jesuits. And anybody that's tuning in, if you'd like to leave questions like, can you explain Revelation 15, 1 through 3 and Isaiah 26, 20, please. Can you leave that in the comment sections below when we have specific times to get detailed into that? And if you could please pay attention to the content we're actually putting forth. And if you have questions that are pertinent to the subject, we would be more than happy to give you more time. But I'm not going to address any off topic comments until the comment section below after the video. Please have please have some respect for us. We're we're putting this content out from our hearts and we want everybody involved in the best way that they can. Thank you. And I would refrain from trying to teach Jason and I anything while we're actually teaching. Mm -hmm. So I'll continue here in five. And then shall the kings and the mighty perish and be given into the hands of the righteous and holy. And thenceforward, none shall seek for themselves mercy from Yahweh, the Lord of spirits, for their life is at an end. Now, this is serious, you guys. And mercy shall not be accorded unto them, saith the Lord of spirits. And in those days, a whirlwind carried me off from the face of the earth and set me down at the ends of the heavens. So obviously this isn't a big bang, infinite universe, heliocentric reality. If there's an end to it, <laughs> and if there's corners to the earth that we stand upon, it is not a spinning sphere. And I'll continue in four. And there I saw another vision, the dwelling places of the holy and the resting places of the righteous. Hmm. Here mine eyes saw their dwellings with his righteous angels and their resting places with the holy. And they petitioned and interceded and prayed for the children of men, and righteousness flowed before them as water, and mercy like dew upon the earth. Thus it is amongst them forever and ever. And in that place mine eyes saw the elect one of righteousness and of faith. Who do we who we who is the elect one of righteousness, Jason? And of No, I'm sorry, I was just looking up those scriptures. That's Yahweh Sha'i. Yeah. The righteous and elect one of faith. And I saw his dwelling place under the wings of the Lord of Spirits. And I'm sorry, everybody that believes in that Jesus is God. 
Jesus means earth pig, and God is the short form name for the fallen angel watcher demon Gadriel, who deceived Eve in the garden. So don't come in here with those blasphemous names. What we get here is you get two characters the son of righteousness, the elect one of faith, and the Lord of spirits, the creator of all. And righteousness shall prevail in his days, and the righteous and elect shall be without number before him forever and ever. And all the righteous and elect before him shall be strong as fiery lights, and their mouths shall be full of blessing, and their lips extol the name of the Lord of spirits, and righteousness before him shall never fail, and uprightness shall never fail before him. There I wished to dwell, and my spirit longed for that dwelling place. And there henceforth hath been my portion. For so has it been established concerning me before the Lord of Spirits. So now Enoch is letting you guys know that he was shown this place and he knew that this is where his soul belonged. This is the place where he saw. I'll continue. I'll continue down. And um, we're just trying to get to the scriptures throughout here pertaining to the end times and what we're supposed to see. And in this, the second parable concerning those who deny the name of the dwelling of the Lord and the holy ones of the Lord of spirits. And into the heavens they shall not ascend, and on the earth shall they not come. Such shall be the lot of the sinners who have denied the name of the Lord of spirits, who are thus preserved for the day of suffering and tribulation. On that day mine elect one shall sit on the throne of glory and shall try their works. Again, we're getting Yahweh talking about his son, his elect one. It is not one and the same. The Trinitarian Kabbalistic Vatican doctrine is from the pits of hell. They are the same words spoken from the serpent's tongue from the beginning till today. And it continues on and their places of rest shall be innumerable and their souls shall grow strong. I'll read that again. And on that day, mine elect one shall sit on the throne of glory and shall try their works and their places of rest shall be innumerable and their souls shall grow strong within them when they see mine elect ones and again now we're getting yahweh talking about two pluralized mine elect ones and those who have called upon my glorious name which is yahweh y-h-w-h they didn't have to write the ah uh sound because it was an unambiguous language, the Adamic language that was spoken down till the time of the Tower of Babel and continued on by certain groups was a very simple one. And the creator's name, Y-H-W-H, always been here. You just add Yahawa. That's it, right? That is his elect name and I'll continue. And I will transform the heaven and make it an eternal blessing and light. So we are told we are gonna get what in the book of Revelations, Jason? A new heavens and a new earth. Guess what? John was reading also from the book of Enoch. And I will transform the earth and make it a blessing. And I will cause mine elect ones to dwell upon it. Again, we're not being raptured and living in heaven. Heaven was a place prepared for certain groups of characters that have lived in this reality. But that wasn't their eternal place. The eternal place here is earth. Let me, but the sinners, go let ahead. me just jump in quick. So yeah, what we read is that the sun and moon are done away with. So how does that work in heliocentrism, everybody? No more sun and moon, but we're going to have all the time light and the light comes from New Jerusalem. So it, uh, yeah, I, I mean, we, we, I don't, Jason's getting so far ahead of himself because <laughs> the new heavens is going to be something to behold. Okay, what we have right now is, is not even going to be, a t a, I can't even give you a, a small comparison. There's nothing in creation that I can even give you to liken it to what the heavens and the skies are going to be, okay? <laughs> but we now have the skies and the stars and the houses that we understand how to keep the correct calendar, and they're beautiful too. I don't want to mock them, but the new heavens is going to be something to behold. Exactly. And there won't be the need for a sun and a moon. No. Right. For they will come down and sup with us. Because we're because we're not in the material reality that's taught by Vatican Kabbalists. We're not. So after he says here, and I will transform the earth and make it a blessing, so there'll be no more thistles, no more thorns. The earth is going to become a blessing, right? On the seventh day, because we went through the six days. 
and I will cause mine elect ones to dwell upon it. He's not saying I'm going to be raptured into the heavens. And I will cause mine elect ones to dwell upon it. But the sinners and evildoers shall not set foot thereon. Right? You guys are understanding this? For I have provided and satisfied with peace my righteous ones, and have caused them to dwell before me. But the sinners, there is a judgment impending with me, so that I shall destroy from the face of the earth, destroy them from the face of the earth. They are raptured, the wicked. And I'll continue in 46. And there I saw one who had the head of days. Who do you think the head of days is, Jason? Yahweh. Correct. And his head was white like wool. And accompanying him was another being whose countenance had the appearance of a man. And his face was full of graciousness, like one of the holy angels. Who do you think that is? Yahweh Sha'ai. Okay, but I want everybody to understand that these two characters are here on earth. And I asked that angel who went with me and showed me all of the hidden things concerning that son of man and who he was and whence he was and why he went with the head of days. So we're getting a picture of Enoch seeing the head of days followed by a gracious, beautiful man following him. And he said, who are these and why is it that he follows him? And he answered unto Enoch and said, this is the son of man who hath righteousness with whom dwelleth righteousness and who revealeth all of the treasures of that which is hidden, because the Lord of spirits hath chosen him, right? And whose lot hath the preeminence before the Lord of spirits in uprightness forever. And the son of man whom thou hast seen shall raise up the kings and the mighty from their seats and the strong from their thrones and shall loosen the reins of the strong and break the teeth of the sinners. And again, we can go to the 66 book canon and you'll find out that he will rule with an iron rod and he will smash out the teeth of these Yuval Harare's and these wicked, abominable men like Bill Gates. You guys be ready. And it states here in five, and he shall put down the kings from their thrones and kingdoms because they do not extol and praise him, Yahweh, nor humbly acknowledge whence the kingdom was bestowed upon them. They've fallen so far, they feel that they have got the reins of this realm and they are going to ride it straight into the murdering of all that is true, all that is righteous, and everything that they're doing. And they are about to feel the wrath of Yahweh. And he shall put down the countenance of the strong and shall fill them with shame. When, when this takes place, as you can read in the book of Revelation, people are, they start fainting, right? And darkness shall be their dwelling and worms shall be their bed. You've heard about the worms. Everybody that reads the 66 book canon knows exactly the line upon line. And they shall have no hope of rising from their beds because they do not extol the name of Yahweh, the Lord of spirits, and raise their hands against mine most high and tread upon the earth and dwell upon it. And all of their deeds manifest unrighteousness. Jason keeps talking about who he hates the most that are these secret society, these Freemason filth scumbags. And not only that, Jason takes it to the top level, to the Vatican Jesuits who swore oaths from many days ago to infiltrate all of the other religions, all of the other secret societies, and to smite their enemies in their own wombs of the women of the different groups. And they've uh, pretended to coalesce with the Freemasons and, and the, the Jewish people that call themselves Hebrews or Jews. They are all being uh, infiltrated by satanic Kabbalistic people that follow Azazel and, and their punishment is coming. Did you want to say anything before I continue? Yeah, let me just interject here quick. One of the scriptures that was asked about earlier was isaiah 26 20 which reads go my people enter your rooms and shut the doors behind you hide yourselves for a little while until his wrath has passed by see the lord is coming out of his dwelling to punish the people of the earth for their sins the earth will disclose the blood shed on it the earth will conceal its slain no longer so that scripture is really paralleling what's That's a good scripture yeah. being talked about right here in enoch this is yeah that he if whoever that was that i told to stay on topic you you could have put the scripture in we wouldn't have deleted it no it wasn't deleted no he didn't put the scripture in 
Right. Yeah, no, he did. That's what I was just referencing. You, you put the, the number. I, I don't do verse two, six, three. I want to see the words, the paragraph. The <laughs> oh. words. I don't want to see numbers. Give yeah. me the words, please. <laughs> and I'll continue. Sorry, I, I don't mean to be. I, I want to. This is great that he added that, but I didn't see that. I saw, what about this? Yeah. And I'll continue in eight. And they, they persecute the houses of his congregations and the faithful who hang upon the name of the Lord of Spirits. Who hangs upon the name of Yahweh? Not many. Not many right now. And in those days shall have ascended the prayer of the righteous and the blood of the righteous from the earth before the Lord of Spirits. And we're waiting. We're waiting for that day. I believe this absolutely, if Jason was able to pull up his timeline, right, of the seven, uh, the seven, we got the three different sevens, which is occulted, obviously, by Aleister Crowley. Right, but we got the seven seals, the seven trumpets, and the seven bowls. And that was one of those. That was one of the other verses. Revelation fifteen one through three actually talks. That's the setup for the seven bowls. And yeah, so we will bring up that end times eschatology and show everybody where that where that falls as well. Yes, because a lot of the Book of Enoch is in the Book of Revelation, and I'll continue here. And in those days, the holy ones who dwell above in the heavens shall unite with one voice and supplicate and pray and praise and give thanks and bless the name of Yahweh, the Lord of Spirits, on behalf of the blood of the righteous with hath been shed. And the prayer of the righteous may not be in vain before the Lord of Spirits, that judgment may be done unto them, and that they may not have to suffer forever. And in those days, I saw the head of days, when he seated himself upon the throne of his glory, and the books of the living were opened before him. Oh, what are we just about to enter into? On atonement. The books of life being yeah, opened and closed? That's when it's shut, on the day of atonement. Uh, oh. Did you want to continue? No, that's good. And all his hosts, which is in heaven above, and his counselors stood before him. And the hearts of the holy were filled with joy because the number of righteous had been offered. Again, everybody like Barriaw and all these other people that tell you that they're once saved, always saved, and that you're going to get flown off the earth, even though that all of the other prophets, all of the other men of Yahweh were brutally murdered, which we'll get into probably next Sunday, a little bit more detailed, how they were sawn in half and crucified upside down and boiled in oil, right? But you think because you're living in the United States of America and you have fresh water that comes through your taps and heat in your house, but you somehow deserve to be lifted off the earth because you believed in one thing. You're, you're in trouble. You're in trouble here. Because this is saying that those have to be killed, offered. And the prayer of the righteousness had been heard. And the blood of the righteous being required before the Lord of Spirits. So this needed to take place. Um, I guess I'll keep reading a little bit more. And in that place, I saw a fountain of righteousness which was inexhaustible. And around it were many fountains of wisdom, wisdom, and all the thirsty drank of them and were filled with wisdom. And their dwellings were with the righteous and holy and elect. And at that hour, the Son of Man was named in the presence of the Lord of Spirits and his name before the head of days. All right, this is the beginning of the Alpha to Omega. We're getting Christ's anointing. Yea, before the sun and the signs were created, before the stars stars of the heavens were made, his name was named before the Lord of Spirits. And he shall be a staff unto the righteous, wherein to stay themselves and not fall. And he shall be the light of the Gentiles and the hope of those who are troubled of heart. All who dwell on the earth shall fall down and worship before him. All will praise and bless and celebrate with song to the Lord of Spirits. And for this reason hath been chosen him, he, and hidden before him, before the creation of the world and forevermore. So there's there's quite of a, a beautiful mystery here. There's a, there's a mystery throughout the scriptures, back to before the creation, this was all set. And the wisdom of the Lord of Spirits hath revealed him to the holy and righteous, for he hath preserved the lot of righteous because they have hated and despised this world of unrighteousness and have hated all its works and its ways in the name of the Lord of Spirits. For in his name they are saved. And again, the only name that we use, which you shall be saved with, has the name Yahweh in it. Yahweh Shai. 
It has the exact name of the father inside of the son's name, only it adds the word salvation to it. Yahweh, the Lord of Spirits, his name means existence. He created it. He exists. And his son's name is He Exists Salvation. Right? That's how you have it. That's how it has to be. And in those days, downcast in countenance shall the kings of the earth have become, and the strong who possess the land because of the works of their hands. For on the day of their anguish and affliction, they shall not be able to save themselves. They're going to hide in the rock. They're going to go in their bunkers. They're going to do other. Elon Musk is trying to create something that they can supposedly fly off into the sky. It's not going to work. And I will give them over, it says, into the hands of mine elect. As straw in the fire, so shall they burn before the face of the holy. Again, this isn't a talking about uh, like Barry. I'll tell you, yeah, we're going to get raptured. Uh, Christ is going to do curbside pickup. Right, he's he's not actually going to sit down because that debunks the the scripture. So we're just going to say he's he's not really coming. He's coming close, but not really. See, that everything they do is called ad hoc theory. So the the righteous are going to witness their feet upon the ground. Are going to witch, witness as straw again. Christ is going to say to the angels, "Go and bind the wicked and bring them to be burned." The right the righteous will be walking on the ashes of the wicked. Yeah, and as straw in the fire, so shall they burn before the face of the holy. As lead in the water, shall they sink before the face of the righteous. And no trace of them shall be found any more. And on the day of their affliction, there shall be rest on the earth. And before them, they shall fall and not rise again. And there shall be no one to take them with his hands and raise them up. For they have denied the Lord of spirits and his anointed. The name of the Lord of the Spirits will be blessed. If you want to take over, Jason. Sure. Do the screen share back towards me. I I mean, if everybody's paying attention, we're going to chapter 50 here. There's there's no rapture, but there is a rapture of the wicked, emphatically spoken of. You're going to have to take the screen share from me. I can't. uh, As soon as you want, you can just take it. Yeah. That's good. Being handled. And in those days a change shall take place for the holy and elect. And the light of day shall abide upon them, and glory and honor shall turn to the holy. And the day of affliction on which evil shall be treasured up against the sinners. And the righteous shall be victorious in the name of the Lord of Spirits. And he will cause the others to witness this, that they may repent and forego the works of their hands. They shall have no honor through the name of the Lord of Spirits, yet through his name shall they be saved. And the Lord of Spirits will have compassion on them, for his compassion is great. And he is righteous also in his judgment, and in the presence of his glory unrighteousness also shall not maintain itself. At his judgment the unrepentant shall perish before him, and from henceforth I will have no mercy on them, saith the Lord of spirits. And in those days shall the earth also give back that which it has been entrusted to it, and Sheol also shall give back that which it had received, and hell shall give back that which it owes. So now we're having a resurrection, again, you know, also speaking of the book of Revelation. Mm Mm-hmm. For in those days the elect one shall arise, and he shall choose the righteous and holy from among them. For the day has drawn nigh that they should be saved. And the elect one shall in those days sit on my throne, and his mouth shall pour forth all the secrets of wisdom and counsel. For the Lord of spirits hath given them to him, and hath glorified him. And in those days shall the mountains leap like rams, and the hills also shall skip like lambs satisfied with milk. And the face of all the angels in heaven shall be lighted up with joy, and the earth shall rejoice, and the righteous shall dwell upon it, and the elect shall walk thereon. I think these scriptures are quoted in the 66 Mm -hmm. multiple times. And after those days, in that place where I had seen all the visions of that which is hidden, for I had been carried off in a whirlwind, and they had borne me towards the west, there mine eyes saw all the secret things of heaven that shall be 
a mountain of iron, and a mountain of copper, and a mountain of silver, and a mountain of gold, and a mountain of soft metal, and a mountain of lead. And I asked the angel who went with me, saying, What things are these which I have seen, and for secret? And he said to me, All these things which thou hast seen shall serve the dominion of his anointed, that he may be potent and mighty on the earth. And the angel of peace answered, saying unto me, Wait a little, and there shall be revealed unto thee all the secret things which surround the Lord of Spirits. And these mountains, which thine eyes have seen, the mountain of iron, the mountain of copper, the mountain of silver, and the mountain of gold, and the mountain of soft metal, and the mountain of lead, all these shall be in the presence of the elect one, as wax before the fire. And like the water which streams down from above upon the mountains, and they shall become powerless before his feet. And it shall come to pass in those days that none shall be saved, either by gold or by silver, and none be able to escape. And there shall be no iron for war, nor shall one clothe oneself with a breastplate. Bronze shall be of no service, and tin shall be of no service, and shall not be esteemed and lead shall not be desired. And all these things shall be denied and destroyed from the surface of the earth when the elect one shall appear before the face of the Lord of Spirits. There mine eyes saw a deep valley with open mouths, and all who dwell on the earth and sea and island shall bring to him gifts and presents and tokens of homage. But that deep valley shall not become full. And their hands commit lawless deeds, and the sinners devour all whom they lawlessly oppress. Yet the sinners shall be destroyed before the face of the Lord of Spirits, and they shall be banished from off the face of his earth, and they shall perish for ever and ever. For I saw all the angels of punishment abiding there, and preparing all the instruments of Satan. And I asked the angel of peace who went with me, For whom are they preparing these instruments? And he said unto me, They prepare these for the kings and the mighty of the earth, that they may therefore thereby be destroyed. And after this the righteous and the elect one shall cause the house of his congregation to appear. Henceforth they shall be no more hindered in the name of the Lord of Spirits. And these mountains shall not stand as the earth before his righteousness, but the hills shall be as a fountain of water and the righteous shall have rest from their oppression of sinners. And then that valley shall be filled with their elect and beloved, and the days of their lives shall be at an end, and the day of their leading astray shall not thenceforth be reckoned. And in those days the angels shall return and hurl themselves to the east upon the Parthians and Medes. They shall stir up the kings, so that a spirit of unrest shall come upon them, and they shall rouse them from their thrones, that they may break forth as lions from their lairs, and as hungry wolves among their flocks. And they shall go up and tread underfoot the land of his elect ones, and the land of his elect ones shall be before them a threshing floor and a highway. But the city of my righteous shall be a hindrance to their horses." and they shall begin to fight amongst themselves, and their right hand shall be strong against themselves. And a man shall not know his brother, nor a son his father or his mother, till there be no number of the corpses through their slaughter, and their punishment be not in vain. In those days Sheol will open its jaws, and they shall be swallowed up therein, and their destruction shall be at an end. Sheol shall devour the sinners in the presence of the elect. And I began to speak the third parable concerning the righteous and elect. Blessed are ye, ye righteous and elect, for glorious shall be your lot. And the righteous shall be in the light of the sun, and the elect in the light of eternal life. The days of their life shall be unending, and the days of the holy without number and they shall seek the light and find righteousness with the Lord of Spirits. There shall, be no, there shall be peace to the righteous in the name of the Eternal Lord. And after this it shall be said to the holy in heaven 
that they should seek out the secrets of righteousness, the heritage of faith, for it has become bright as the sun upon earth, and the darkness is past. And there shall be a light that never endeth, and to a limit number of days they shall not come, for the darkness shall first have been destroyed, and the light established before the Lord of Spirits, and the light of uprightness established forever before the Lord of Spirits. Wow, right? 61. And I saw in those days how long cords were given to the angels, and they took to themselves wings and flew, and they went toward the north. And I asked the angel, saying unto me, Why have these angels taken these cords and gone off? And he said unto me, They have gone to measure. So who's, who's given in the Bible, in the 66 book canon, who's given the task to measure? The two witnesses, Revelation 11. Interesting. And the angel who went with me said unto me, These shall bring the measures of the righteous, and the ropes of the righteous to the righteous, that they may stay themselves on the name of the Lord of Spirits forever and ever. The elect shall begin to dwell with the elect, and those who those are the measures which shall be given to faith, and which shall strengthen righteousness. And these measures shall reveal all the secrets of the depths of the earth, and those who have been destroyed by the desert, and those who have been devoured by the beasts, and those who have been devoured by the fish of the sea, that they may return and stay themselves on the day of the elect one. For none shall be destroyed before the Lord of Spirits, and none can be destroyed. And all who dwell above in the heaven received a command, and power, in one voice, and one light, like unto a fire. And that one, with their first words, they blessed, and extolled and lauded with wisdom. And they were wise in utterance, and in the spirit of life. And the Lord of Spirits placed the elect one on the throne of glory. And he shall judge all the works of the holy above in heaven and in the balance shall their deeds be weighed. And when he shall lift up his countenance to judge their secret ways according to the words, word of the name of the Lord of Spirits, and their path according to the way of righteous judgment of the Lord of Spirits, then shall they all with one voice speak and bless, and glorify and extol and sanctify the name of the Lord of Spirits. And he will summon all the hosts of the heaven and all the holy ones above, and the hosts of Yahweh, the Cherubic, Sephirin, and Ophanin, and all the angels of power, and all the angels of principalities, and the elect one, and the other powers on the earth, and over the water on that day shall raise one voice, and bless, and glorify, and extol in the spirit of faith, and in the spirit of wisdom, and in the spirit of patience, and in the spirit of mercy, and in the spirit of judgment and of peace, and in the spirit of goodness, and sh shall all say with one voice, Blessed is he, and may the name of the Lord of Spirits be blessed forever and ever. All who sleep, not above in heaven, shall bless him, and all the holy ones who are in the heaven shall bless him, and all the elect who dwell in the garden of life, in every spirit of light who is able to bless and glorify and extol and hollow thy blessed name. And all flesh shall beyond measure glorify and bless thy name forever and ever. For great is the more mercy of the Lord of Spirits, and he is long-suffering. In all his works and all that he has created, he is revealed to the righteous and elect in the name of the Lord of Spirits. And thus the Lord commanded the kings, and the mighty, and the exalted, and those who dwell on the earth, and said, Open your eyes, and lift up your horns, if ye able to recognize the elect one. And the Lord of Spirits seated him on the throne of his glory, and the spirit of righteousness was poured out upon him. And the word of his mouth slays all the sinners, and all the unrighteous are destroyed from before his face. And there shall stand up in that day all the kings of the mighty, and the exalted, and those who hold the earth, and they shall see and recognize how he sits on the thor throne of his glory. And righteousness is judged before him, 
and no lying word is spoken before him. Then shall pain come upon them as on a woman in travail, and she has pain in bringing forth. When her child enters the mouth of the womb, and she has pain in bringing forth. And one portion of them shall look at the other, and they shall be terrified, and they shall be downcast of countenance, and pain shall seize them. When they see that Son of Man sitting on the throne of his glory, and the kings and the mighty and all who possess the earth shall bless and glorify and extol him who rules over all who was who was hidden and from the beginning the son of man was hidden and the most high preserved him in the presence of his might and revealed him to the elect and the congregation of the elect and holy shall be sown and all the elect shall stand before him on that day in all the kings, and the mighty, and the exalted, and those who rule the earth shall fall down before him on their faces, and worship, and set their hope upon that Son of Man, and petition him, and supplicate for mercy at his hands. Nevertheless, that Lord of Spirits will so press them, that they shall hastily go forth from his presence, and their face shall be filled with shame, and the darkness grow deeper on their faces. And he will deliver them to the angels for punishment, to execute vengeance on them because they have oppressed his children and his elect. And they shall be a spectacle for the righteous and for his elect. They shall rejoice over them, because the wrath of the Lord of Spirits resteth upon them, and his sword is drunk with their blood. And the righteous and elect shall be saved on that day, and they shall never thenceforward see the face of the sinners and unrighteous and the lord of spirits will abide over them and with that son of man shall they eat and lie down and rise up forever and ever and the righteous and elect shall have risen from the earth and cease to be a downcast countenance and they shall have been clothed with garments of glory and these shall be the garments of life from the lord of spirits and your garments shall not grow old nor your glory pass away before the Lord of Spirits. So obviously it's easy to understand in the parabolic language that garments are these avatar suits or yeah. bodies, right? I think that's the end of that chapter. All right. I need a reading break. <laughs> you ready to yeah, take over? Sure. I can't take the screen share until you uh, end it. But yeah, I'm ready. That was good. You, you, you did great, brother. Let me make sure I've got it on. Okay. Let's go. So now we're reading. We're to the verse in chapter 80, verse 2, and it says here, And in the days of the sinners, the years shall be shortened, and their seed shall be tardy on their lands and fields, and all on the earth shall alter, and shall not appear in their time. And the rain shall be kept back, and the heavens shall withhold it. And in those times the fruits of the earth shall be backward, and shall not grow in their time and the fruits of the trees shall be withheld in their time, and the moon shall alter her order, and not appear at her time. And in those days the sun shall be seen, as he shall journey in the evening on the extremity of the great chariot in the west. And all end shall shine more brightly than the accords with the order of light, and many chiefs of the stars shall transgress the order prescribed. And these shall alter their orbits and tasks and not appear at the seasons prescribed unto them. And the whole order of the stars shall be concealed from the sinners, and the thoughts of those on earth shall err concerning them, and they shall be altered from all their ways. Yes, they shall err and take them to be gods, and evil shall be multiplied upon them, and punishment shall come upon them so as to destroy all again. That is what we are saying. Nobody is keeping the correct seasons and Moedines. It is just Jason and I. That's it. And nobody's willing to stand with us. Well, we're going to see what happens soon enough. And I'll continue here in verse 81. And he said unto me, Observe, Enoch, these heavenly tablets, and read what it is written thereon, and mark every individual fact. And I observed the heavenly tablets and read everything which was written thereon and understood everything, and read the book of all of the deeds of mankind, and all of the children of the flesh that shall be upon the earth to the remotest generations. And forthwith I blessed the great Lord, the King of glory forever. 
in that he has made all the works of the world. And I extolled the Lord because of his patience and blessed him because of the children of men. And after that, I said, blessed is the man who dies in righteousness and goodness concerning whom there is no book of unrighteous written and against whom no day of judgment shall be found. That's Christ. Uh, give you the cliff notes. 5,000 years. This was a 3,000 year prophecy of the coming Christ. This was so far ahead of its time that it's just unfathomable. Not only that, but Enoch also gave us every course, all of the past, the sun, the moon, the stars, everything. But let's continue. And those seven holy ones brought me to brought me and placed me upon the earth before the door of my house and said unto me, declare everything to thy son Methuselah and show to all thy children that no flesh is righteous in the sight of Yahweh, for he is their creator. One year we will leave thee with thy son till thou givest thy last commands that thou mayest teach thy children and record it for them and testify to all thy children. And in the second year, they shall take thee from their midst and let thy heart be strong for the good shall announce righteousness to the good. The righteous with the righteous shall rejoice and shall offer congratulations to one another. But the sinners shall die with the sinners and the apostate go down with the apostate. And those who practice righteousness shall die on account of the deeds of men and be taken away on account of the doing of the godless. And in those days they ceased to speak to me, and I came to my people blessing the Lord of the world. And now, my son Methuselah, all things I have that I am recounting to thee and writing down for thee, and I have revealed to thee everything and given thee books concerning all these so that you may preserve them, my son Methuselah, the books from my father's hand, and see that thou deliver them to the generations of the world. So. You can see why this book was taken away. And I incorrectly stated before, Methuselah was Noah's grandfather. It was the son of Enoch, and I, I had that wrong. There's also Jared in the mix, too. But I continue on, so you can see why this book was taken away. If you're not following along here. This book was for all generations. right? And I have given wisdom to thee and to thy children. And to thy children, that shall be to thee that they may give it to their children for generations, this wisdom, namely, that passeth through their thought. And those who understand it shall not sleep, but shall listen with the ear, that they may listen, learn this wisdom. Again, when you hear the scriptures, when someone says that ye that have ears, let him hear, right? you are getting a direct line pointing you back to the book of Enoch. That's what Christ was saying and all of the other prophets. And it shall please those that eat thereof better than good food. Again, who was Christ talking about when he said, I am the bread. I am the heavenly word that came down from heaven. The bread is a parabolic key for the word of the creator, right? The righteous and holy and elect one. And it continues on, blessed are all the righteous. Blessed are those who walk in the way of righteousness and sin not as the sinners in the reckoning of all their days in which the sun traverses the heaven, entering into and departing from the portals for 30 days with the heads of thousands of the order of the stars, together with the four which are intercalated, which divide the four portions of the year, which lead them enter in with the four days. Owing to them, men shall be at fault and not reckon them in the whole reckoning of the year. Yea, men shall be at fault and not recognize them accurately. Oh boy, could this not be more prophetic than right now? Right now. For Very prophetic. Yeah. Yes. And for they belong to the reckoning of the year and they are truly recorded thereon forever. One in the first portal and one in the third and one in the fourth and one in the sixth. And the year completed in 364 days. Look, this is a 5,000-year-old book. Now, there are some inaccuracies in some of the transliterations and translations, but I'll continue. And the account thereof is accurate, and the recorded reckoning thereof exact. For the luminaries, and the months, and the festivals, and the years, and the days, has Uriel shown and revealed unto me, to whom the Lord of the whole creation of the world hath subjected the host of heaven." And he has power over night and day in the heavens to cause the light to give the light to men, the sun, the moon, and the stars, and all of the powers of heaven which result revolve in their circular chariots. So again, Jason and I have been showing everybody the earth is flat, 
right? It has four corners and everything rotates. It rises up through the ground. It goes in a half circle and sets and goes under the earth. So I, I just might interject here that um, the Enoch calendar is a completely solar calendar. He talks about the reckoning of the moon, but the Enoch calendar just goes by the the spring equinox, and that's how the year is reckoned. And it's 30 days per month, and then there's, um, you know, the summer solstice, and then it's three months of 30 days, and then it's the fall equinox, and then there's three months of 30 days, and it's the winter solstice, and then there's three months of 30 days, and you get back to the spring equinox. It doesn't the year 360 and the four days are not to be accounted for yeah so this is not like the hebrew calendar that was given to moses where it's right. where the year is reckoned by by the months moons. right moons that's right well said thank you but this is the first account and this is the way that it was before the flood right and these are the names of those who lead them who watch as they enter in at their times in their orders in their seasons and in their months and in their periods of dominion and in their possessions, their four leaders who divide the four parts of the year enter first. And after them, the 12 leaders of the orders who divide the months. And for the 360 days, there are heads over thousands who divide the days. And for the four intercalary days, there are the leaders which sunder the four parts of the year. And these heads over the thousands are intercalated between the leader and leader and behind a station. So again, what we're, we're, we're getting the, the, specifics and the understanding of how the different illuminaries and the orders of everything and how it was completely given. And I'll continue here. We're almost finished. We're going to chapter 92 of the book of Enoch. And it says the book written by Enoch, indeed, Enoch wrote this complete doctrine of wisdom, which is praised of all men and a judge of the earth for all my children who shall dwell upon the earth and for the future generations who shall observe uprightness and peace let not your spirit be troubled on account of the times for the holy and great one has appointed days for all things and the righteous one shall arise from sleep right? shall arise and walk in the paths of righteousness and all his path and conversation shall be in eternal goodness and grace that's yahweh i is christ and he will be gracious to the righteous righteous and give them eternal uprightness and he will and he will give him power so that he shall be endowed with goodness and righteousness and he shall walk in eternal light and sin shall perish in darkness forever and shall no more be seen from that day on forevermore so we can see here i'm pretty sure that's the end of what i wanted to read i just want to make sure there's not a verse down here so after what i just finished was was the end of of the 120 jubilees this is the end of the all of a sudden you know we're not going to have well i i guess if i want to be more correct this will be the end of the thousand year reign that's when the complete destruction so the the wicked are going to be released and then the final lake of fire judgment happens at the very end of the seventh day leading us into the eighth day uh, you can take the screen share back when you're ready jason all right so i hope i hope everybody understands that not only have we not spoken of any raptures and we have spoken of raptures but they were of the wicked to be destroyed off the face of the earth and it said that the righteous were going to watch right it didn't say they were going to go off into heaven and then come back with christ sometime no it says christ is going to be here doing the whole time doing the work yeah so i just threw up the end times eschatology chart here real quick this uh the link is in the description box and I think this is the most current version. I, I made a correction on it. No, I don't have... the. This one isn't the correct one, but in the description box there should be. So, the question was brought up earlier regarding the first bowl. So this... The bowls of wrath take place. If you read Revelation 15, these are the final, final judgments. And so... That takes place after the abomination of desolation. What we are is over here in this time period where we just had the UN SDG summit. This right here is referring to the, the true day of atonement. The, the change here is I, I have 2324 
to make this more accurate so that people don't think it's 24 25 and um so this fits with the the day of atonement so we could be seeing real soon here the red horse the black horse and the pale horse and the day of atonement if this is the year that the great tribulation begins we could be at the fifth seal at the day of atonement um the sixth seal is, is a very big significant one and, and it has the sun has already been darkened and the moon turned to blood so that happens the moon turning to blood on the first day of tabernacles now the seventh seal is is a quiet one right it's it's not something that we're going to really see there's silence in heaven but then the um this green line here is achieved by going 1260 days back from Passover in 2027. So Passover will be April 22nd, 2027. And go back 1260 days. And this is when we would expect to see the two witnesses uh, come to power, be anointed. And so we've got the sun darkened, moon turned to blood right here. Then there'll be a sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then there's the Son of Man's sudden arrival. The, the the elect are sealed and then the three angels are told to go harvest earth stick in your sickle and reap so the things that we are looking for for fulfill, fulfillments right now is that the gog of magog war needs to take place and who knows this this could start happening tomorrow with the, with the fake false day of atonement then there should be a man of lawlessness that uh, stands up and we could really be into it so this would be jacob's trouble here with the seven seals and then the the great tribulation seven trumpets during the the first half of the great tribulation and seven bowls of wrath during the second half then the big rapture verse everybody's looking for first thessalonians there it is 4 14 through 17 meeting christ in the clouds because guess what happens at the end of the great tribulation we've got christ coming on the clouds not curbside huh <laughs> yep and then uh yeah so the dragon and the beast are defeated the first resurrection so all those that died in christ during the great tribulation uh, the the righteousness that had to be offered up that we just read about yeah that first resurrection so they don't miss out on, it's on not those who were raptured those who died who gave their blood for the truth you yeah. and let's see here so christ's millennial reign begins and then at the end of the thousand years we have the judgment day where there's the second resurrection where it doesn't all the good all the bad everybody's resurrected everybody gets judged and yeah the the false prophet is is released for a time period and then thrown in the lake of fire and then that's it except there's there is stuff in the book of enoch that lets us know that there's an eighth day a ninth day a tenth day eleventh day Just, no the eighth day is perpetual forever yeah yeah. Um, you know, if that was your conclusion, I, I just wanted to quickly read out the description box here. We have uh, eight fundamental truths. One, Earth is fixed and immovable, and heliocentrism is the strong delusion, not the fake alien agenda, okay? The Big Bang heliocentrism, round, no cornered, not mo not fixed Earth is your great deception. Number two, the AE map model is impossible, created and disseminated primarily by the Freemasons to destroy the credibility of the Bible with an easily debunked model that they have worked so hard on to try to link to the Bible. That's the popular flat earth pizza United Nations domed infinite earth. Okay, that one's not real. Number three, you're actually in a virtual reality and that material reality that we have been taught by scientists that goes back to the ancient Greek philosophy of atomism is actually impossible, nor can you even witness it number four the creator of this world is the author of the bible his name is yahweh yahweh and his son and the only be is the only begotten who is our savior and his name is yahweh shai he who died on a torture stake for us and was resurrected there was no letter j until the about the year 500 500 years ago 
which is about the time that the strong delusion was rolled out, linking back to fundamental truth number one. And then we'll continue on with five, the true Hebrew calendar that Jason's been showing on you on the right-hand path. The true Hebrew calendar is a luni solar and month of Nisan, Aries, the lamb, Abib is the head of the year. So we keep the sun rising in Nisan, which is the sign of the lamb. Passover must take place while the sun is in the constellation of the lamb. Link to the current Hebrew calendar can be found after number five. Number six, the Trinity is Kabbalism. The three-in-one doctrine is just three parts of the Sephirot and is labeled Christian Kabbalism. We just read the Book of Enoch. We got the Lord of Spirits, the head of days, and accompanying him was the Son of Righteousness. So we have the Father and the Son, not one, two characters. Now we have number seven, the rapture is of the wicked, and that is to judgment and to everlasting fire. And last but not least, or to be lessened of, number eight, biblical reincarnation is true and is a doctrine confirmed by the Baptist, John, who was Elijah, and Yahweh Sha'ai, who was the rebirth of Adam, the first created son. The only son who came down from the living father was Adam. And then when Gabriel breathed the life into Mary, the second Adam, who actually got to be the, the child. Adam wasn't born a child. He was a man. But Christ Yahweh Sha'ai was the fulfillment of that. He was the true son. He got to he got to grow up here. Yeah, absolutely. That's all in the description box, everybody. So it's been great. It's been a great night. Yeah, e Enoch. I just love those scriptures. Ooh, love it. So powerful, right? I come, we know why I got taken out. We know why. Because they're scared and they should be. Everyone well, and it, who's a sinner. It makes it so obvious that the Trinity is impossible if you read the yeah. book of Enoch. Of course, right? <laughs> it's so simple. They, and that's why it was taken away, right? Everything was added to the scriptures to make people confused. Like people try to tell you that... Um, Abel and Cain were twins when they weren't. They both had twin sisters. And you can only get that if you read the book of Adam and Eve. And you find out that they had twin sisters and they were supposed to marry each other's twin sister so that the, the correct genes, the way that the creator had decided for it to be, was correctly done. And Cain was put, Satan put in Cain, Azazel put in Cain's heart, or Gadriel, God, who most people try to call Yahweh, told Cain, that your sister is far more beautiful than that of Abel's and you should kill your brother and take her. And that's what Cain did. And the reason that Cain's offering was denied wasn't because it was the vegetables. It wasn't that wasn't why it was because what he wanted was impure. It was not right. That's not the way that it was created. And, and that's why these books were taken away. And just as the Christ was the parabolic understanding of the word, when he was sitting with the apostles, he showed them that this bread is like me and it was broken into pieces. The scriptures were fragmented. It had to be. And now they're being brought back together in these end times. And it all is being perfectly fulfilled out. Everything is being completely laid flat as the horizon in front of your eyes is as flat as it is and as level as water lays. And here we are today. It is Sunday, September 24th in the Gregorian year, 2023 in the paleo Hebrew year, five, nine, nine, three with the final seven year Shemitah leading up to the final of the 120th Jubilee that was given unto man who you can read, what you can read about in the book of Jubilees, which was also taken out also being brought up in the book of Jasher, which also edifies and brings you all the way back to the understanding and the explanation of the books of Enoch, the great and righteous scribe, who was such a great man that Yahweh brought him up to live in that throne room and to be with Yahweh forever. Amen. Wow. You nailed it there, brother. So Let's say it the truth. It's been fantastic. Is there... Is there anything else you want to mention before we wrap up this oh, yeah, evening? I got it all out. No, I thank you everyone for tuning in. All glory to Yahweh and his righteous son, Yahweh Shai, forever and ever, their reign. All right. Where's the only place people are going to get any of this information? Only the Yahweh Shai News Network.
not be the same. Two people laughed. Two people cried. Most people were silent. Takes on his multi-armed form and says, Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds.
takes on its multi-armed form and says, now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds.